Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? I am Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Ulmer. We are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. <laughs> Zambu, taste the tingle. It's a uh, delicious liqueur developed by a Central Illinoisan for Central Illinoisans. Grab some at a vendor near you, Zambu. Without further ado, let's introduce today's guest. So today's guest is a graduate of Millican University. He received his master's in business analytics from Notre Dame. He's a board member for Elevate Illinois. He's a certified economic developer and an economic development financial professional. He is also the current CEO of Bloomington Normal Economic Development Council, Central Illinois. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Patrick Hoban. How are you doing, Patrick? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on here. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you. You've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good list of stuff here. But before we get too far into the show, I'll have Garrett um, ask you some speed round questions to get to know you a little better. Okay. All right, Patrick, we always like to ask our guests a few questions so our listeners out there can get a little better idea of, of who you are um, as far as that goes. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and start. Go for it. All right. What's the first concert that you ever attended? Oh, Ario Speedwagon and Sticks at the State Fair back in the 80s. <laughs> good one. That's a good one. I think that's a first. We haven't heard that one. Yeah, I'm pretty old, so. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite movie? Oh, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, by far. That was one where I saw that actually made me go back to college. At the time, I was a community college kid and on the fence if I should keep this bartending thing up or not. And I saw that and I'm like, yeah, I should probably apply myself. There you go. <laughs> Pay it off. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, this is going to be really lame. Somebody just asked me this the other day. That's vanilla. I think it's uh, did you just, probably vanilla bean. Then it, the secret's in the topping. So some fresh Hershey's chocolate syrup on top. There you go. Are you an iPhone or Android guy? Oh, iPhone. Always been iPhone. I was Apple before Apple was cool, before the iPhone existed, uh, because I was originally a graphic designer, so everything was on Apple. So when that came out, yeah, I was a part of the cult, I guess you would say. Yeah, smooth and easy transition. Yeah. Favorite social media platform? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, Right now, probably LinkedIn, just because of the line of work that I'm in, trying to tell the story of what's going on in Bloomington Normal and Illinois as a whole. There's a lot of businesses and site selectors that can see all the great things that we're doing on LinkedIn. Gotcha. And last but not least, why Central Illinois? I think uh, the people, I mean, honestly, I, I've done this in uh, Chicagoland. I've done it in Central Illinois and a couple of different communities. And it's there's something about being down here. I don't want to say salt to the earth, but people mean what they say and say what they mean. And that goes a long way in my world and this business. Sure. Absolutely. Perfect. That's a, that's a good answer. Well, cool. Well, Patrick, so you're the CEO of Bloomington Normal EDC. Correct. As an economic developer, the developer, yes. what, what do you do? Just give us a quick rundown of what you do for the EDC. What's your, your job duties? So the, uh, the simplest combination is uh, our explanation would be, you know, it's all, our, our role is all about information relationships. So it's all about who knows what and when, And our goal is to create an environment in a community and in a state of Illinois where businesses want to reinvest and create more jobs. So our role is just to match up businesses with available land and the resources, uh, because there's a lot of resources locally, state and federally. uh, We play matchmaker, you know, so we're like I said, information relationships, making sure that all the small mom and pops know about all the same tools that major companies have to get them to reinvest and attract talent and continue to grow. Uh, because the better we are at what we do in economic development, the better our community is. And there's nothing better than driving around Decatur, driving around Bloomington Normal, even up in Tinley Park where I was at, and seeing our work and seeing families that work there. That is very cool. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people really understand what happens behind the scenes with economic development or chambers of commerce or anything where you've got a, a group of people who are dedicating their time and resources to building the community. Um and, you know, I'm lucky that I've, I've had some experience behind the scenes on boards and stuff. A lot of people don't realize 
who's involved and how businesses get to where they're at. And that's something cool that, you know, Patrick, you're obviously a leader in, in doing that. And first off, thanks for doing what you do. And yep. second off, people listening, there's, there's a lot of people who know a lot behind the scenes that are um, responsible for bringing a lot of these business to, to the area. So kudos. Yeah, if we do our job right, we're normally always behind the scenes. <laughs> right. Even whenever I was recruited into this industry, you know, in a previous life, I worked at an ad agency. So I was a graphic designer, senior designer. Um, and after that, I was working for a commercial real estate developer. And the CEO of the EDC there in Decatur said, hey, if you can do marketing and real estate development, come develop a whole community. So once I got in and I saw how the whole system worked, which is why all those acronyms are behind my name, um, there is a lot of players behind the scenes. And our goal is to stay behind the scenes, but you're just going to see golden shovels and jobs being announced. And that's, that's when you know you're doing your job well, is that you're, you're seeing constant investment back in your community. Sure. Absolutely. So you mentioned um, before we got on the air here that you had a uh, experience as a bartender mm -hmm. and you, you considered even jokingly, maybe seriously writing a book. So tell okay. us about your journey from, uh, you know, bartending and then making it to, as a CEO, as an economic development professional. I guess we shouldn't have to question what's in that cup that he's been drinking either. Should we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My cranberry juice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, so yeah, I was a uh, community college kid. It was one where actually, it's funny because I look out my window right now up here in Uptown Normal and ISU is right there. My dorm at ISU, so I, I did one year at ISU, had way too much fun. So my parents were like, you're coming home. Um, so I ended up going to the community college there at Richland. And I took one to two classes a semester while I was a bartender. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. And at the time, graphic design was just getting big on the computer. And I was an art major here at ISU. And so I was bartending, like I said, working at an ad agency. I had taken enough classes where I you know, won awards for billboards. I learned websites. I grew up with websites as they were getting better. And um, from there, I uh, worked for a commercial real estate company there in Decatur that uh, I did 3D models of buildings. So there was a Ruby Tuesdays there. That was one of my projects where I built a model before they came and they bought the land and built the thing. Cool. So a lot of projects around there. Um, but then... Once I got into the EDC, they recruited me in, like I mentioned earlier, and I didn't really have a degree. So like, if you want to make it in this industry, you're going to have to go back to school. Luckily, Milliken had a wonderful program, went through uh, Milliken's program. Um, immediately after that, took a job at the city of Decatur, got all my credentials. And then as soon as you get the credentials, the CFD that you guys mentioned earlier, you can pretty much do this anywhere. And at, at that time, I had I want to say probably 10 years under my belt, which gave me a shot at going up to Chicagoland because I wanted to check out that market. And did that for about three years, um, graduated from Notre Dame while I was up there. And the combination of Milliken and Notre Dame and all the credentials uh, made me ready for a position like this, um, where now I'm the CEO and I've been doing this for about two years. And it was just one of those, like back to the Goodwill hunting thing, you know, you, you see something like that, you get inspired, you know, you're better than, you know, what you're currently doing. And I knew I was, it's just, I didn't know what path to take. And I slowly figured it out. Uh, it was one of the reasons why I was in Decatur. I was actually coaching football because I wanted to tell those kids at LSA, like, hey, there is a way. I know at your age, it's kind of hard to figure out, but if you stick to it and keep hustling, you'll work your way up. And yeah, I've got, I've got a great story to tell and uh, hope I can pass that on. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, if you if you write that book, let us know and we'll help you uh, get some sales. Absolutely. So. Yeah. No, <laughs> that, trust me, it's in the plans. There'll be some funny stories in there too. And <laughs> a lot of fails, but the whole point about failing, as long as you're failing forward, you know, and you're, you're learning every single time, incremental growth, uh, that's how you get here. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a pretty common theme when we talk to individuals like yourself is everybody sees success, right? But I think the biggest thing that people don't talk about are the failures you oh. know, or, or mentors. Did you have any mentors along the way to, to keep you on your path and keep going? Yes, I've had a ton of mentors um, over the years. And that's anytime we talked about workforce or workforce challenges, I always go back to we need better mentorship programs. Um, yeah, I've, I've had them not only in this industry and coaching football, I've had great mentors. I mean, I started playing sports and man, I was super young, probably four or five years old. So I mean, I consider every coach a mentor. Um, I had great parents who had installed a great worth ethic. So my dad and my mom, both mentors of mine, um, still go to them for advice today. Uh, but yeah, as I was coaching football, you could tell there were some kids that did not have that mentor. And to them, that was me. 
And so I took great pride in having that mentor mentee relationship and paying it forward. Um, so yeah, I mean, not without calling people out individually, but yeah, I've had multiple mentors and still do today. I, I, I truly believe that you learn more from your failures than you do success. Definitely. Yeah. Learned, I'm trying to instill in my kids now because uh, they have been uh, you know, pretty successful at everything they do. So whenever they do fail, it's like, hey, why did that not work? And I have to go back to great examples like Michael Jordan, who didn't make his high school basketball team. <laughs> yep. There's exactly. so many of those that, yeah, I mean, you can mess up as long as you're learning from it. And even yeah, back to coaching, um, we always said win or learn, you never lose. So from every loss, you're going to learn something. And that's that's the bigger takeaway. And unfortunately, when I played football at MacArthur, we only won one game my senior year. Wow. <laughs> so I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> There's a lot of lessons there. It's all good. So, yeah, you so you coached football. Where did you coach football at? Uh, Decatur LSA, the Lutheran LSA. School there. Okay. So okay. Would, would that have been when they had the new – was it a pretty new team? Yes. So they had okay. they just started the program. Um, I think it might've been two years in and then Craig Bundy came on board and he okay. was a hall of fame, ISU hall of fame or Illinois hall of fame coach. And I started the same season he did. And it was funny cool. because he went to school with my mom and oh, wow. I was, I was at some chamber event. Another, another good reason for chambers is the networking uh -huh. and the uh, principal of the school was there. And I was like, Hey, I want to, I want to get back to the community. Do you have any positions, you know, open for football? And he's like, yeah, we got a new coach. Come talk to him. And I literally walked into the office. He didn't even know that who my mom was at the time, but we just started talking X's and O's. And he was like, yeah, I was like, we don't, we can't pay you much. And I'm like, well, I don't want to get paid because then I can just volunteer and leave when I need to. He's like, you're, you're good to go. And yeah, so I just started and it was, it was an amazing three years uh, before I had to move. And that was one of the hardest parts about leaving that community to go to Chicagoland was the kids. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I still have uh, notes from them and messages. I, I still stay in contact with them now because they're graduating college, which is funny. Some of them here go to ISU and they still come for me uh, for advice, you know, when it comes to their careers and next steps. Right. That's awesome. That is very cool. So you, you talked about your experience in an ad agency and, and marketing. Um, what are some ways, obviously there's a lot of ways you probably use that experience, but um, when it comes to marketing um, Bloomington normal, what are some ways that you've carried over that experience from your prior ad agency marketing experience to, to now? Oh, there's, yeah, there's a ton of it. I mean, a, a social media, you know, as it's adapt, adopted over the time, I've literally, uh, I think Forbes follows 5,000 people in the world. I'm one of them because I, I tricked them using a technique on Twitter uh, where I would actually follow startup companies. And as soon as they got funded, I would say congratulations to them. And at the time, a startup company might have 20 people following them. And I was one of them. I was like, hey, congrats on your latest round of funding. And all of a sudden they'd thank me and it would just start picking up steam. And um, just, I would say hacks on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, I've used consistently. And now we're getting really creative. Um, up behind me is what we call a familiarization pack. So over COVID, I would normally go meet with businesses and meet with site selectors and we couldn't do that. So we mailed them local products. So we've got a Ferrero chocolate factory here. We've got beer nuts. So we just mail out beer nuts and let them know, hey, here's all the cool things that are happening here. So it's not just the websites and social media, but going old school by creating lumpy mail that they're going to open um, and just let them know that we're thinking of them, you know, so that there's a warm, you know, open next time I meet them in person and they remember it. Like I just got back from some conferences and they're like, oh, you know, thanks for the beer and the beer nuts. That was a great Christmas present last year. So That's it's, it's cool. all those different techniques and campaigns that I used to do at an ad agency we're doing now just on behalf of a community. Awesome. That's very cool. I think that are you guys utilizing Twitter or not Twitter, but um, TikTok at all? So I am not an expert in TikTok, but we did have somebody who was, and um, she actually, unfortunately, her and her husband, good for them, they took a they, they moved to a beach community down south. So I don't blame okay. them because it gets pretty uh, cold yeah. here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she was an expert at TikTok and had a huge following. Actually, my uh, daughter and her boyfriend are pretty big on TikTok right now, so I'm trying to learn that one. Uh, but yeah. for us, when it comes to workforce. You know, we've got two universities here with about 24 college kids, and we're always saying, how do we get them to stick around? We got really cool jobs. Yeah, you, know, you got to go where they are, and they're not on Facebook. They're on TikTok. So next year, we're going to launch a branding campaign because, you know, we're blooming to normal, but that doesn't really mean anything to anybody. It's got a different, like, we're a great place to raise a family. Could be a college town. Could be an insurance town. Now with Rivian going on, manufacturing again. But along with that, we're going to hire a community marketing manager who will be in charge of TikTok and pumping out the rest of it, whatever our new brand is. Gotcha. Yeah, right now, Bloomington Normal, you know, in itself doesn't have 
an overall brand. You ask a hundred different people, you get a hundred different answers. Sure. Sure. Well, that's cool. Yeah. We're very interested in trying to keep up on all the new ideas. And we've had several people on that are TikTok savvy and okay. Garrett and I haven't quite caught on yet, but we had a gal from Effingham who does, she's the like wedding and event planner at Firefly Grill. In oh, sure. Great place. Yes. So she was talking about her, she does a wedding podcast and she said that her and her podcast co-host started a TikTok and they did a video that got like zero to 30,000 views in a matter of like less than a week. Wow. So it can, I can't believe the amount of attention you can get through TikTok, but that's something that I'm definitely yeah. interested in learning. Now you mentioned some LinkedIn hacks. Mm -hmm. Are you able to share those on the podcast? Yeah. No, I mean, any, anytime you're using social media, whether it's Twitter, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, there's different ways to create posts. So you can curate posts of things that are you know, happening somewhere else and then um, basically tie it to your message. One hack that we always do is you thank the writers. Nobody ever thanks the writers. So it's like, right. you know, the writers have very small followings. So if you see an article that's really cool about Illinois, which is what Elevate Illinois is all about, you know, it's just trying to pump up these cool stories that are happening because you always see negative news. But if you say, all right, here's a cool article, you know, check out this and this written by the panographs, so-and-so. You, so you tag the paper, you tag the writer. Um, almost always the writers will retweet it or re-like it on LinkedIn. It gives them a push because the most of the time they kind of get lost in the shuffle. So we always thank the newspaper, thank the writers themselves. That's big. And then also just using the right hashtags, whatever you're doing um, with it and staying consistent with that. But I think calling out the people that are in it and the more people you call out, the more traction that it gets. Absolutely. So that's a small one that um, gets a lot of attention. Cool. Yeah, that's something that anybody, if you're a LinkedIn person, which Garrett and I are, that I'd say our favorite platform is probably LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Um, I never think of that, I guess. If I'm sharing an article, I just share it. So yeah, that's one of those. It's really easy to share. And sometimes you say this is a cool read or whatever. But yeah, if you put a little bit more effort into it and, you know, thank the paper, thank the radio, whoever wrote the thing or said it. If there's somebody tagged in it, congratulations, so-and-so on being announced, whatever, and then go from there. Um, nice. I also go back to Millican and I teach a class on um, uh, branding, you know, personal branding for social media. And there's actually YouTube videos that are out there. I can send you guys links, but there's a whole yeah. section just on LinkedIn. Cool. But it's really, yeah, that's awesome. if you're thinking about a graduating college student and you're like, hey, how do I, you know, get noticed? There's a variety of ways to do it. Um, but the easiest way is, you know, I know you're their parents and your parents' friends, contact them, get connected, and then start giving your classmates, you know, bumps, <laughs> start talking yeah. about how great they are at certain things. And the more time you use those keywords that are in the jobs that you want to apply for in your stories and your whatever, and get them to say it too about you. Like, yeah, he's really good at social media. If that's what you want, that's how they're going to find you. Cause otherwise you get filtered out. Right. Awesome. So you, you teach a branding class at Millican. Yeah, personal branding what, course. What are some of the topics that you go over within personal branding? The, the biggest one, uh, like almost going back to being known. So like for me, I, I, everyone I'll say, be known for three things, you know, on social media or just in general, like in, in the job world. Uh, so coming up with your brand. So for me in economic development, I always try to stay on top of everything that has to do with marketing, everything that has to do with economic development and everything that has to do with new technology. And then I just blend those things together. When I went to Notre Dame and analytics came involved, that started tying in. I'd be kind of, I kind of got put into a box as like this data guy. And I'm like, as a bartender, you can't really be a data guy. So <laughs> like more extroverted than that. Uh, but I try to, I try to mix that in too. So I'm not just a numbers person, but once you figure out what that is, there's a way that you can use uh, RSS feeds, so real simple syndication. And you follow the companies that you want to work for. You follow the topics that you want to be known for. And you just start pushing that stuff out until you can start writing your own. And so the, right. the, using real simple syndication, having the news come to you instead of it being fed to you, you can actually go pull it itself and then uh, just find those three things you want to be known for and learn as much as you can about them. And that's, that's cool. a really easy hack to constantly push things out. Um, so before you go into a news or a, a interview for a job, you're going to know what's going on in the industry. And the easiest way to find out who the players are is uh, so if you want to go into marketing, find the biggest marketing conferences you can and then follow all the sponsors, you know, and follow all the exhibitors that are there. And then you're going to know uh, what's going on in the industry. Nice. I'm writing notes here. 
total I'm, hacks, but I mean, I've got a half page of stuff wrote down. Yeah. I feel like I'm in class right now. Well, I'll send, you, I'll, yeah, I'll send you guys the videos. There's, the there's definitely ways here. that are for e for Facebook, Twitter. I think we did quite a few, but it used to be an hour long. And at one point we did a weekend workshop that people paid for uh, to come learn how to do this stuff. Very That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So is this class like, is it, a, does Millican charge for it or how does that work? It's, you said it's, it's an hour in a couple of different ways. So there's been one that's been open to the public and students on a weekend. That's a longer workshop. But then the other one is uh, I've done a couple just for communication students. Cool. Just to come in at like all levels, but it's more, the biggest thing for me is like, Hey, you guys don't have any clue who's looking at your posts. So like everyone Google yourself right now. And they're always like, Oh my God. I'm like, yeah, you're not getting my internship because of that picture of you doing a keg stand. <laughs> So be real careful. Right. I, I tell them a personal story. It's like we used to have a pool and, you know, as soon as people got there, you leave your phones inside. Like there's no reason to have, you know, unflattering right. photos out there if we're all going to be having adult beverages around a pool. So it's like, yeah. you got to be really responsible these days because it'll stay with you. Yeah. Gosh. Yep. That's Derek sure. and I just had that conversation we last week. We were talking <laughs> about stuff. It's like, you know, yep. we grew up in an era to where really Facebook wasn't around. And mm -hmm. I comment all the time, like, man, I am so glad that stuff was not out when I was a kid, you know, because it's like, you don't care because you don't think of what your future is going to bring 10, 20, five years, a year down the road, right. you know? So, yeah, that's true. Crazy. Don't really care at some point until it comes back to bite you. But Facebook is the timeline that is never going away. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. there forever. It sends me a reminder every day of what stupid stuff I did in the past. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, Patrick, you mentioned Ruby Tuesdays in Decatur mm -hmm. was something that you kind of had your hand in. What are some of the projects that you're kind of proud of that uh, maybe are already developed or are developing in Bloomington Normal? Can you share some of those ideas with us? Yeah. So um, the, the biggest one that just got announced, I think, earlier this year was uh, so Ferrero Roche. They make the chocolates yep. it's an Italian company. They're going to open the first North American chocolate factory here in Bloomington. Very cool. Um, $75 million deal, 50 to hundred jobs. And it's right behind my house. So I'm hoping the whole neighborhood smells like chocolate. <laughs> That'll <That'd> be nice. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. I get to brag about whenever I'm out, you know, talking about what's going on in Bloomington normal. Yeah. Um, but also right now with Rivian automotive, everything they're doing to expand. I mean, those guys started off saying they only needed a third of this building. Um, mm -hmm. They've since taken it, the whole thing over, blew the doors out, added a million square feet and just added or filed for another 600,000 square feet. So helping wow. them, helping them be as big as they can is vital mm -hmm. for us because we know at some point, like they're, they're a global company. They are, they're going to have to be as big or bigger than GM and Ford, which has plants all over the world. Yeah. Um, so they're going to do that, but we want to get them to do as much as they can here and get as mm -hmm. much of their suppliers here as well. Um, and that, that's really going to be based off of our workforce, but w watching them grow is just an amazing, there's a lot of buzz pun intended with the uh, EV industry. Yeah. Uh, so, so getting them, you know, as far along as they can is awesome, but then also helping out small mom and pops, like during the pandemic, we ran a little grant program and just taking them little $10,000, you know, forgivable loans was awesome as well. And like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years and you see it from little startups all the way to a $250 million, um, uh, Midwest Inland Port and Emerald Yard indicator. So it's sometimes you're at the beginning of a project. Sometimes you come in at the tail end. There was a deal in Tinley Park that was going on for 13 years and we closed it when I was there. And then I left before they broke ground on it. So it's just, it's nice. just playing a small role in a lot of projects, just pulling levers here and there, trying to find out who you can connect and get them lined up uh, to be successful. And then when you see it at the end, it's this big rush while you're doing it and you go to the groundbreaking and it's like on to the next one. <laughs> like it's right. It's a cool scene to see that golden <laughs> shovel and to see all the press and, you know, hell being the New York times and wall street journal and the amount of press that we get for all these projects is amazing right now, but it's, it's just never ending. And so yeah. it's, uh, it's gotta be kind of like watching a kid it. grow up. I mean, I yeah. would think. Oh, kinda like well, it's like Brandon's idea, you know, Brandon yeah. Lockhart coming and we're having coffee one morning is like, yeah, I want to open up this barber school and open up all these other shops and, then get into real estate. And I'm like, is there really a market for that? You think so? And there was. And so that just, that's the coolest part. There's another good story up in Tinley where this guy owned a pizzeria and he's like, Hey, you know, I've been seeing these self-serve beer places. I want to open up a self-serve wine bar. I'm like, oh, I've seen those in hotels in the city. He's like, you think that could work here? And I'm like, yeah, there's plenty of disposable income. I don't see why not. So seeing that one idea, then watching him just change the sketch and the building and the layout and then walking in afterwards and he's like hey we did it and i'm like yeah you did you're doing great 
Um, so yeah, it's, it is like watching a kid grow up and just to see the joy and the jobs that are created and seeing your community develop. It's not just, you know, about the jobs themselves or the investment, but the quality of place, like everything changes, everybody gets excited. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, the greatest industry I've ever known. It's something I didn't even really know existed until I got into it. Gosh. Very cool. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be very satisfying to see, you know, what you put your work into and your hands were on and, you know, see where it ends up. Yeah. So um, I had another note, just gonna let me find it here. So real estate development, obviously that has translated into what you do now. Um, what as a real estate developer, what are some of those tools that you now use in your economic development career? Well, I think the biggest one is just knowing, um, which this is super lame, but the number one factor in economic development is where the infrastructure is at. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll have a RFP request for a proposal come in from the state or a business or a site selector. And they'll say, hey, I need 20 acres and it has to have this much water, this much gas, this much road access. And so to be able to inventory all of that, I mean, to know the real estate, know what's available publicly, but also know what's available offline as pocket listings is huge. Because sometimes we might have two weeks to fill these things out. Other times you've got like two days and mm -hmm. be able to have someone come in town and say, okay, I'm looking to do this type of a development. You can drive them around and you're showing off not just one property, but the selling the whole community. That's where the salesmanship comes in. And also like the 3D modeling helps a ton, but being able to let them know that not only is it going to look pretty and it can be done, but now with Notre Dame's and the analytics, I can back it all up with the numbers. Yeah. So that economic development finance professional thing, it's, it's one thing to say, all right, I got this developer that wants to do this, but he's going to say, I need $2 million to make it happen. Then you got to go to an elected official and tell the public why they need to give up $2 million. And so that, that the marrying between Yes, it's beautiful, but here's how you're going to get your money back. That's how you mm -hmm. get deals done. And yep, so that's yep. the back engine where a lot of people in economic development, they might know the front side, but they can't justify the numbers. And what we can do that's different is to say, hey, you're going to give up some property taxes for a little while. But at the end of the day, because there's more jobs, more disposable income, the property taxes will come in in the end. You're going to be extremely successful. And it's a win-win, which is a lot of lobbying, for lack of a better term, behind the scenes. But at the end, they all get to stand there and hold that golden shovel and see those new jobs, which is where that partnership comes in. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So much more behind the scenes than I think what anybody would ever anticipate or think about. Yeah, that's that's my other book is going to be, you know, basic economic development because it's <laughs> it's really an art and a science. And I think most people think of it more as a science, but the art side of it, knowing the nuances on how to sell a developer, how to sell your board, how to sell a community. It's, uh, it's completely different than anything I've ever seen because there are, there's a lot of politics involved, you know, locally, state, even the feds. I was in DC last week trying to explain and uh, trying to really figure out what they're going to do with all the, the new funds that are coming, which we go to DC every year and we've been successful at bringing dollars back. Um, but it's, it's a lot of different elements or objectives inside the overall goal of developing one community. Nice, for sure. So if you're, if, if I'm a business, small business, large business, whatever it is that is considering, you know, maybe taking your business to bloom to normal, where do they start? How do they start with that process? Uh, the best thing to do is if you contacted us or the chamber, it's just saying, Hey, I've got an idea. I'm interested in your area. And then for us, it'd be to find out what your business is. And depending on what your business is, will dictate on where that conversation goes because not all businesses are created equal. There's times We've had projects come in for, you know, a pig farm or a slaughterhouse. And it was like, no, uh -huh. thanks. Like, that's not going to, that's not going to mix well with, you know, in our community, or you might be a competitor to someone else that we have here. And that's not going to work either. Mm -hmm. um, so that it really depends. The message on how we reply and how we guide you is going to be based off of what industry you're in and what you want to start. We have tons of partners. So our main focus is non-retail development. So when it comes to hotels or restaurants or retailers, we normally hand those off to the municipalities, which we have 23 of them here um, in McLean County, which is quite a few. Wow. Uh, but depending on what their expertise level is, they might say, okay, I'm just looking for a site for a new grocery store. We'll get them the sites and then we hand the ball off. So we do a lot. That goes back to that who knows what and when. We hand the ball off a lot and we can come back and we can help them make an ask to a community to get the deal done and uh, help out in the back end. But for the most part, it's just, it really dictates or depends on what your industry is and how we can help. Very nice. Very nice. Well, believe it or not, Patrick, we're already uh, close to our 30 minute mark here. So 
before we get off, is there anything that you want to leave the, the listeners with? Anything that you want to, any ideas or concepts you want to talk about before we? I would, yeah. I mean, down? overall, just as my job to sell this community, I mean, Central Illinois is awesome. And we've got a commuting campaign going on right now because uh, you're know, coming from Chicago and people commute all the time. And actually here in Bloomington Normal, about 30,000 people drive in every single day. And we have so many jobs and we're growing we're going like crazy. Rivian was supposed to be at about four to 500 jobs. They're at 3,500 jobs right now and they need more. And these mm -hmm. guys are starting off 20, 21 an hour. That's just entry level. Wow. I think State Farm needs 500 to 700. Like we, we've got jobs. So if you want good money, uh, low cost of living and 12 golf courses for some reason, if you golf, it's <laughs> uh, a great place to live for me. So yeah, uh, yeah, I would say if you haven't been here in a while, come check it out. There's a lot of development going on and it's, uh, it's a really exciting time in Bloomington Normal. That's awesome. awesome. Well, I think that area has got to be lucky to have you. I think that uh, it doesn't take much for anybody to see or listen to you to see your passion behind making it work and growing. And so uh, kudos to you, man. Yep. Oh, thanks. It's been a, it's, it's been one where we literally, we took Tinley Park because it was close to the Bears, which I'm a suffering Bears fan, also close <laughs> to Notre Dame, uh, big music fans too. So they had the music venue and we knew that there was going to be one more community to go to before, you know, we transitioned into a consulting role. So this is my last one. But we were really thinking it was going to be the city of Chicago, Washington, D.C., go big or go home was going to be the mantra. Um, but I saw Bloomington Normal. I was here for a year at ISU, very fertile ground. And I'm like, I don't think they realize what they've got down there. Uh, yeah. Low yeah. crime, highly educated, good disposable income. And yeah, it's it's been really smooth transition. We're, we're doing really well. Awesome. That's, awesome. That's great. Well, how can our listeners find you? Um, how can they contact you? Social media, phone numbers, emails, whatever's best for you. Feel free to give them the, the rundown. Yeah, it's, it's really Patrick Hoban on LinkedIn. It's probably the easiest way you can look me up or check out bnbiz.org. Uh, Twitter, it's just phoban. Uh, and uh, as cheesy as it sounds, just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Hoban, Bloomington Normal. I'll, I'll show up quite a few places right now. Thanks to all the press at Rivian and Ferrero and everybody else is getting. Awesome. Great. Well, for, for all you listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on whatever platform you consume podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Um, also, while you're there, please leave us a review. It'd be very helpful. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook and engage with our guests there as well. Until next time, Patrick, you've officially been civilized. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks much, guys. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-I-B-L podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.